All right. I didn't ask your permission, Josh, but I'm going to record this because there are a few people that are truly bummed that they don't get the opportunity to listen to you because they still have that J-O-B that <laughs> they're trying to get rid of. But, we got to fix that like right now. Right, like now. So once they hear this call, things will change. <laughs> um, but I wanted to let you know that I actually have, I have two groups on here. I have what we call the Executive Club, which are my, my hustlers, my um, every single month get shit done. Um, they have requirements to be in that group and they hit it. And so they're the, they're the movers and the shakers and team made. And then I also invited, um, <laughs> the name of the group is called, called God, not another group. Um, <laughs> it's, it's my, I talked to, talked to you earlier. It's, it's my leaders that have been in the business for quite a long time. And we just kind right. of more have a mastermind together than, than it being, um, anything else, just us, us, veterans that get together and talk and share numbers and best practices. So, uh, and I wanted to thank you, especially in front of all of these wonderful people for, you know, I just, I just messaged you in a moment of desperation and just said, ah, I need help. I feel like some of my, some of my team is stuck and um, I don't know what to say to them. And you offered to come on and, and be on this call. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being such a good friend. You're and, more than welcome. And always a great mentor. And I will let you take it away because um, okay. <laughs> I know you're will, agenda. Will you hate my guts if I take 10 seconds to move to a spot where I can plug in my computer? Because oh, I no, didn't no, realize no. my battery was low. Okay, give no, me no, one no. second here. Living that, coffee, living that coffee shop life. Here's, here's, here's the coffee shop that I hang out at every day. <laughs> here's, here's, here's the bar over here. We can get my favorite espresso drinks. This is, if, if you ever come to Tulsa, Oklahoma, just, just come here and you will find me. There was, I actually, I actually ran into a girl uh, a couple weeks ago. She came into the shop and I actually came in with my mom that day and she was like, I, I came here and I was hanging out because I know you come here every single day. And wow. I was like, she was like, I'm going to go to Fairfellow and meet Josh today. And uh, she was like, I've been here all day and you didn't show up. And I was like, gosh, dang it. The one day that I come, he doesn't. And then I came walking in with my mom and she was like, you are here. You really do come every day, don't you? <laughs> and and, I, and, it, and it, made me, it made me feel really special because I'm sure you know this life, Melissa. You go to a Beachbody event and everyone wants a picture with you. Yeah. You come home and nobody knows who the heck you are, right? <laughs> like, like nobody gives a crap who you are in your hometown. And so I happen to be with my mom. And so... I was like, you know, you just made me look like a rock star in front of my own mom. So I appreciate that because <laughs> no one in Tulsa knows who the heck I am. So now I feel, now I feel really cool. And I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a very high peacock. So I enjoy feeling special. <laughs> so Perfect. Um, but thank you, Melissa, for having me on the call. Um, Melissa <laughs> is, is, is a good friend. And I always tell people, anytime Melissa comes up in a conversation, I know I've told her this a hundred times. I don't care. Um, anytime she comes up in a conversation, I always tell people, Melissa is everything you'd hoped she would be. And then some, because you always, always, always are afraid to meet people who have such an incredible reputation because there's just no way they're going to live up to that. Right. You're like, I'm probably going to meet them and they're actually going to be a douche. And then I'm going to be so sad that they didn't live up like everyone said they were sweet. But um, I always tell people, Melissa is literally the opposite. You meet her and you're like, holy shit. Like, they should have said more. Like, like, whatever they said about her wasn't enough. She really is an amazing human. So I'm honored. I mean, she asks me to hop on a call. And I'm, I'm there in a second. Uh, I'm just honored to be associated with her. Thank you. So you're welcome. Um, she told me that you guys needed some help. So I want to come on and give you a couple things. Of course, we have to deal with your mindset first. I can never, this, this pisses Micah Folsom off, but I can never just give you what I need to give you. I always have to take care of your mindset first. Um, because if we don't have an open mind, we're nothing. Mm. We're nothing. With, without the mindset, we're nothing. I can give you action steps all day and night, but if I don't open your mind first, you will fall and you will fail every time. That's why it's so important to always give the why before the what. For those of you that have teams, most of you are on this call, I'm guessing because you have a team. Remember that. 
especially if you are a task oriented person instead of a people oriented person. There's, there's personality types. I won't go into the full blown thing, but we basically have people who are more outgoing and then we have people who are more reserved. Okay. That, that's kind of like our energy level. Okay. I'm obviously a little more outgoing. My energy level is like through the ceiling all the time, which is why I come to a coffee shop to get even more energy. Um, but then we have task oriented and people oriented. Okay. Now, if you are task oriented, you walk into the coffee shop and you have your checklist ready to go. You don't notice that anyone else is there. You don't really care what the barista is wearing or whether they smile or not. You just want your coffee and you sit down and you have your checklist and you do your work. Right. right? If you're people oriented like me, you walk in, you see who's hanging out there for the day. Is there anyone I recognize? You go say hi to the barista. By the way, you know them by name. Mm -hmm. uh, they already know what drink you're going to order before you order it because you've literally built a relationship with them. You hang out, you talk to the barista for 10 or 15 minutes, find out how their weekend was. Two hours later, you have finally sat down and now you're making up a checklist because you didn't show up with one, correct? Here's the thing. If you are task oriented, your biggest blessing is that you get shit done. Your biggest curse is you rarely help anyone else get shit done because you're so focused on the task. You forgot that everyone else on the call wasn't really ready for the task yet. And by the way, according to Dr. Rome, not sorry, Rome, not Rome, not Jim Rome, but Jim Rome. He is uh, the creator of the disc personality types. He spoke at our last John Maxwell training. According to him, 80% of the population is people oriented, not task oriented. Which is why task oriented people <laughs> get so frustrated all the time because they are so driven and 80% of the world can't keep up with them, right? 80% <laughs> of the world is like, hey, well, 80% of the world thinks you're a dick and you're really not. It's just that you think differently, correct? So you've got to take time to explain why. Why do we need to reach out to people? It's not enough to just tell people, hey, you need to have 20 conversations a day. That's why if you go through my brand new Art of Recruiting, I redid all of the modules. It's 10 modules now instead of four modules. It comes with 10 bonus modules from my clients instead of two. I mean, it's literally an entire new training. It's literally an entire like business building training instead of just recruiting. And every single module starts off with like a 20 minute explanation of why you have to do the thing that I'm about to teach you how to do. Yes, you can be bipolar. Some people totally are. I'm, I'm a little bipolar. I'm people oriented. And then I have this weird phase for my business that I go into where I just get shit done. Um, and that's really more of my outgoingness than it is my task oriented. Um, and so as a leader, you got to understand guys, people aren't at your level. If they were, they wouldn't be on your call, right? They'd be on their own call. They're not on your level. They don't understand what you understand. They do not have the perspective that you have. So you have to take yeah, a couple yeah. minutes to give them that perspective and help them understand the why before yeah. the what. Uh, to be honest, I only need five minutes, guys. I only need five minutes to give you the what. But I need 45 minutes to give you the why. Did you catch that? I really only need five. And that's why Micah Folsom gets so pissed at me sometimes because her mindset's already there, right? But I know that her team's isn't. And so I have to take the 45 minutes to get her team on our mindset with us to give them the what. And, and Micah really doesn't get mad at me. She just likes to tease me because she is such a task oriented. She's a, she's a machine. She really is a freaking machine. She just needs the what, just give me the what and I'll go do it. But that's not most people. Okay. So here's the thing that I need you to understand this morning before I give you the what is this word urgency. Some of you have been on my webinar. Some of you have heard it. I see my good friend, Amanda Ward, hanging out with us today. How you doing, girl? Okay. Some of you um, know this word from some of my webinars. Urgency has literally changed my life. It has changed my training. It has changed everything I do. How many of you have read the book, The 12-Week Year? Anybody read that? 
Okay, good. So most of you are understand the principle a little bit. Here's the problem. I love, 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 love the book, but it doesn't go urgent enough. Because most beach body coach, the whole point, let me break this down real quick in two seconds for those that haven't read the book. The point of the book is that most people wait till the last quarter of the year to perform. So he helps people break their year into 12 week segments. In other words, pretend that this quarter is your year. Pretend that this is the end of the year quarter. Here's what I found with beach body coaches is 12 weeks is too long, right? In fact, I would even say a month is too long because we have these monthly goals of I'm going to hit success club this month, which by the way is, is bullshit. Okay. Helping three people a month is ridiculous. If you're only helping three people a month, I mean, just, I, I don't even know what to do with you, to be honest. <laughs> I challenge people in my groups to get rid of, not to get rid of monthly goals, okay? But to multiply their monthly goals and then create weekly goals. Weekly goals. Monthly goals aren't enough. And by the way, they're not big enough. They need to be bigger. Whatever your monthly goal has been, you need to multiply it by any number other than one. Two, three, four, ten, whatever you gotta do. You got to get that number out there far enough that it actually forces you to stretch for something why do we say when we're stretching reach for the ground even if you're not flexible yet like this guy right here even if you're not flexible yet it's giving you something far enough away to reach for right once you can touch the ground what do we say we say get your palms on the ground notice we never go from touch the ground to to like get your first knuckle to the ground. We, we, we never say, we, say, we go from touch the ground to get your palms. Then we go from palms to like freaking elbows. And then if you're Melissa McAllister, we just, we just say stick your whole face on the ground, right? <laughs> I mean, come on, she's the Pio girl. She's gotta be flexible. So that's the thing is you gotta set your goal big enough that it forces you to stretch. I'd be willing to bet that the number one problem with anyone in this group that's not moving forward the way they want to is that you're just not stretching yourself far enough. Because if I say hit success club 100 this month, you may not come anywhere close, but in your attempt to hit 100, you will go far beyond what you did last month. Say, Josh, but, 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 but the algorithm's messed up. And, and ads aren't working like they used to, and, and, and Instagram is overcrowded, blah, 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 blah. All I hear is bullshit, 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 bullshit. Because there was a man, Henry Ford, who started this car company that some of you have heard of. It's, it's called Ford Motor Company. And he was sitting down with his engineers one day, and he said, I want a V eight engine in my vehicles and all of his engineers, the best in the world looked at him and said, it's impossible. He said, that's fine. Go do it. I said, no, you, you don't get it, bro. Like it, it's cute. It's like kind of cute that you who like came up with an idea to have wheels and stuff like that. And, but we're the ones that put it together. We know how it actually works. Like it's cute that you think you know what you're doing but you don't, we know what we're doing and that's not possible. He said, that's fine, go make it happen. At some point they realized we either have to at least try to work on it or we're fired, so we'll just go do it just to make them happy, right? Three months later, we have gone through every possible scenario, put together every single thing you could possibly imagine, this is impossible. He said, that's fine, go make it happen. He just kept telling them to make it happen. 12 months later, the very first V8 engine was created. And now it's I mean, just the norm, right? A V8, that didn't surprise anyone when I mentioned, when I said V8, people weren't like, wait, what? A what? A, a what? No, it's just normal. If you have a Cadillac, it comes in like every vehicle, right? These days, an SUV almost always has a V8 if it has a third row, right? I mean, it's just normal. If I tell you to do something, I'm telling you there is this something that lives on the inside of us, whether whatever you believe about spirituality really doesn't matter. This isn't a religious talk. We have infinite potential living on the inside of us. And when you force yourself, when you set a goal big enough, 
it forces you to find a way to make it happen. And that's why I teach that urgency creates focus. Some of you haven't been focused on the right things, guys. Some of you, the real reason your numbers are down is because you don't even have a checklist. You've spent more time creating posts than you have talking to people. You've spent more time goofing around in silly branding trainings. No offense to branding trainings. I know there are some good ones out there. But branding is not going to change your business overnight. It is an essential part of business. Okay? It's one of the pillars of business, but it doesn't put money in your pocket. Okay? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying branding isn't important. I am, don't get me wrong. Okay? But branding is not going to take you from SC10 to SC100. Okay? <laughs> right? Um, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Okay, some of you, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to relay it back to health and fitness because that's what you guys get. Some of you are trying to lose 100 pounds running on the treadmill. And you're going to need to run on the treadmill like three or four hours a day to get the same results you could get in like 25 or 30 minutes of doing a high intense training, right? High intense inter interval training. That, that's where I was looking. A hit. <laughs> I'm impressing Melissa with, 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 my, with my health terminology now. And you're doing the same thing with your business. A lot of you are running on the treadmill. Okay? Now, I am going to give you a tool today that I believe will help you. Okay? Um, I believe will help you to bring people to you. That's the way Melissa has built her business is lots of people coming to her. If you study the top coaches, most of them have people coming to them. Here's the problem that most of you have is that you don't have 80,000, 200,000 followers, correct? Guess what? Neither do I. In fact, I built a pretty freaking phenomenal funnel a year ago when I had 1,500 followers on my like page. 1,500. And I had probably more people coming to me than any of the top coaches do. So I'm going to give you a couple of those samples today and of how I've done that. I'm going to make it really, really, really simple for you. You don't need a seven hour training on how to make this happen. I'm going to teach it to you in about 30 minutes. Okay. Um, but here's the other thing. Urgency creates focus. You got to focus on the right things. Please understand that the funnel I'm about to teach you does not replace reaching out to people. Okay. I was working with one of my, one of my clients and, and, and I, and I warned her, I said, do not abandon what you're doing to go all in on this because funnels take time. She said, Josh, no, no, no. I just have to go all in. I said, no, do not go all in. Do not abandon the old ways to create a new way that's not going to pay off for three to six months. Well, she didn't listen to me. She abandoned it and she hit like success club four that month. And she's a seven figure earner. <laughs> So to be a seven-figure earner hitting success club four is not good. She said, you were right, Josh. I should not have gone all in. I was like, I, I, I tried to tell you. So just because I'm teaching you a way, what I'm going to teach you today is how to create future momentum, okay? Don't abandon current momentum for future momentum, okay? Please, 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 please. Or I will get an email from, I don't know, I will get a freaking phone call from Melissa in six weeks saying my team just had the worst month they've ever had. F you, please never talk, call me again. Okay, the second thing is urgency breeds creativity. It breeds creativity. If, you're urgent, if your goal isn't urgent enough, you're not looking for creative ways. What you're usually doing is, is looking for excuses. Creativity is our best friend. Friend. To some of us, it comes a little more natural than others. Some of you are analytical minded. I hate having conversations with you because you're so dang boring. And, but some of us have this natural creativity that we can really, 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 really press into. Okay. If you don't have that natural creativity, please learn from some of us that do. Okay. And, and, and that is why some of you do need some branding training because you're so analytically minded. You for, you forgot that. A, I, I just won't go there. Your branding is just terrible. <laughs> The third thing that urgency demands is ownership. I need every single one of you right here and right now to take ownership for where your business is at. If you are struggling, it is not the algorithm's fault. 
I'm getting plenty of engagement on my Facebook page. My ads are absolutely killing it. It's not Facebook's fault. Facebook has changed, but guess what? I evolved with it. I learned with it. In fact, I don't even, I, I wouldn't even listen to Facebook. I mean, I, at this point, I know my customers better than Facebook. The Facebook needle, when it tells if it's too broad or specific, I don't freaking care. You don't know what my audience is. I do. I don't need to listen to you. I, I learn myself. Wherever your business is at right now, good or bad, I need you to own that. The only person that got it there is you. Say, Josh, I'm on the struggle bus. Look in the freaking mirror. It's your fault. Okay? Every single time my business has a valley, I look in the mirror and say, what did you do wrong? I do not look at my followers and say, oh, man, they suck this month. Oh, man, people, blah, blah, blah. I don't. I look in the mirror. I say, what did you? Because I know that I 100% own my results. Now, I know exactly what some of you are thinking because, gosh, I know you guys so freaking well. Some of you are thinking, yeah, but Josh, I can't rank advance if my coaches don't do anything. Same stupid excuse I hear it over and over and over that you are crippled by other people. You're being a victim. That's no different, no different than a woman who is being abused by her husband who refuses to leave. I'm not saying you need to leave your coaches, but what I am saying is you are in control of your destiny. You manifest what's on the inside. Law of magnetism, one of the laws in the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership by John Maxwell, he's a pretty smart guy, says you attract who you are, not what you want. You want motivated coaches? Look in the freaking mirror. Get more motivated. You be motivated. And, and, and here's the thing is, is you're looking at the short term, not the long term. I had an entire year of building my business where no one was motivated to sign on with me. So I said, keep being motivated, keep putting out, keep learning, keep growing. They'll come. They will come. It doesn't mean that I force anyone. It doesn't mean that I put pressure on anyone. I keep doing me. I keep moving forward. I keep growing. I keep expanding my reach so that the people, can I just tell you something? If you haven't figured this out already, the people that are excited today will not give a shit six months from now. I apologize. Potty mouth Josh is coming out this morning. <laughs> they won't. They won't. So if you're not expanding your reach and your brand, six months from now, your business is dead. Because the people that are there now will not be there six months from now. And it's sad. It is. It sucks. But it's life. My brother is a pastor. And he was telling me he was reading some Statistics on churches, and according to statistics, every two years, a church cycles through a brand new group of people. And I said, that's funny. I could have told you that, bro. Like, like it's cute that you're reading all this, but I, I kind of, like, if you just, like, talk to your little brother every once in a while, like, I already know all this stuff, dude. I tell my clients the same exact thing. It's just life. It's life. Does it suck? I, I mean, who cares? What, what does it matter? Okay, if you are growing and you are owning your results, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Two years ago, I was working with one and two and three star coaches. A year ago, I was working with five and six and seven star coaches. Now I pretty much won't work with you one on one unless you're a superstar diamond or a top 10. So there's nothing wrong with evolution because if you're actually doing it the right way, you should be constantly leveling up. Constantly. Talk to me a year from now. I don't know. I may only work with you if you're a seven figure earner. I don't know. You should constantly be leveling up. And here's the thing. If you are leveling up as a human, as a person on your own growth journey, you should naturally attract other people on a higher level. It shouldn't just happen naturally. And that is actually another law from the 21 year feeble laws of leadership is that leaders naturally draw to greater leaders than themselves. 
If you're a level three leader, guess who you're attracting? Ones and twos. Such a scam because all the people at the top are making all the money. <laughs> no, the people at the top leveled up. So higher levels of people are willing to follow them. If you're a level 10 leader, yeah, you're going to get a bunch of eights and nines that want to follow you. Guess what happens when you have eights and nines on your team? They kick ass, right? And you make a lot of money because let's face it, ones and twos are not that motivated, right? Now, you got to start where you got to start. So if that's all you're getting, be thankful for those ones and twos, but just know you need to level up. You need to take yourself to a higher level. You will naturally bring people at a higher level with you. Does that make sense? So make bigger goals right now. That's your first homework assignment. As soon as you're done with this call, you set bigger goals than you've ever had before. That's why I created the hashtag let's puke together. <laughs> I've got a lot of really upset emails from people in the fitness industry that think that I'm supporting bulimia somehow. I don't know how they think it. I don't know how they're stupid enough to think that I'm actually like trying to like whatever. But the concept is when you are really chasing after your goals, you should be puking. How many of you have ever been working out and you feel like you're going to throw up? I mean, that's me every day. I push myself to the absolute limit and then I try to go three more steps. You should be doing the same thing in your business. You should be going to your absolute limit and then go another three steps. Go to the point where you don't think you can go anymore and then go further. Let's puke together. Urgency creates focus, it breeds creativity, and it demands ownership. Those three principles right there have literally changed my training groups. In January alone, I had more testimonials of people who had increased their sales, increased their pay, than I had had all of last year. That's crazy, isn't it? The new art of recruiting, Week one, oh my gosh, Josh, you're making us do so much. I don't know if I can handle this. Week two, I'm just so overwhelmed. How do I even keep up with all this? Week three, okay, some sales are starting to come through. Week four, holy shit, I just blew last month's numbers away. I'm making people puke and they're getting results like they've never had before. Okay? So, now that I've given you some mindset stuff and hopefully some stuff that's going to challenge you, let me teach you some stuff. Can I teach you something that I do? So this is how I get people constantly coming to me. I've tried to break it down into a system that's very easy to understand and very duplicatable. I need you to understand that people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Write those three words down. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. If people are not buying from you, it's because they don't know you, so they can't like you, so how could they trust you? The number one goal is we want more people to know us. How many of you say, Josh, if, if 20,000 more people just knew who I was, I could probably increase my sales, right? So what I've done is I've created kind of a funnel that is constantly getting more people to know me so that then I can have the experience of getting them to like me and trust me okay so this is how I run my Facebook ads I'll, I'll break it down for you in a process so that you can hear it first and then I'll kind of show you I'll, I'll share my screen with you take you into my Facebook ads manager and walk you through how I set up a couple of them okay number one we have motivational posts okay write this down motivational posts by the way, this is something that I offer in my new Art of Recruiting as like a three-hour module. I'm just giving this to you guys for free because you're Melissa's girls, so you're my girls. Okay, sound good? So number one, we're going to use motivational posts to extend our reach to get people to know us. If we do it right, we will get people to know us and like us all in one step. Okay, now this is very, very simple. What I do Let's face it, my following is Beachbody coaches. That's the majority of who I'm trying to expand my reach to. 
So what I like to do is take a picture of me working out with you guys at a Super Saturday or at the event that I held here in Tulsa. I literally have a picture of myself working out with a motivational post that says something like, I'm just gonna give you, it's, it's literally so simple. One of them might say something like start today because sometimes later becomes never. Is that not like something you guys would say? Come on, I'm literally like stealing your quotes from Instagram, right? And the only point of this is you as a Beachbody coach see someone that is also working out, that is also giving motivation. So there's a really good chance you're gonna like that post, am I right? And then anyone who likes my Facebook ad, I then can invite to like my page. So all I'm trying to do is get a ton of likes accumulated on this post so that I can invite you to like my page. Now, some people will teach to run a like campaign, and I'm not necessarily against that per se. However, in my opinion, if you run a like campaign, you're just getting people to, you're not even really getting people to know you or like you. They're liking your page, right? But I don't want them to just like my page. I want them to like me. Does that make sense? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put something in front of you that makes you go, ooh, I see you and I like you. I'm liking the post, but mentally and subconsciously, I like you. Does that make sense? So I'm using this to kind of speak the language of my audience. I'm accumulating as many likes as I can, and then actually I have an assistant who goes through and invites them to like my page. If you have assistants, anything that comes out of my mouth that you can think that an assistant could do, give it to your assistant to do, okay? I set up my ads, my assistant takes care of everything else because it's so easy. Then, I have Facebook Lives that I do from my page where I obviously share more motivation and I get a little bit more into what I teach on. And I run those lives as ads toward my like page to make sure they all see it to where they get a chance to hear my message and connect with me. So if they, my motivation post was enough to get them to know who I am and kind of like me, but let's face it, they don't really trust me yet. I mean, it's just like a picture of me jumping in the air over the top of everyone's head because my camera guy got the perfect angle and made it look like I can jump, okay? But they don't really trust me yet. But then they see my Facebook Live and they hear my live personality and they see the way I move my hands and all of this, all of this, all this craziness that's going on. And now they know me, they like me, they trust me, okay? Now, I run ads toward my like page to try to get them onto some free thing where I can sell them. So instead of doing some type of a call to action post that says, hey, are you wanting to lose 10 pounds? Join my next challenge group. I'm not against those posts. If you've got them to work for you, that's fine. Don't change it. But a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people are really struggling with the call to action ads. Raise your hand if you've struggled with call to action ads. So what I'm now teaching people how to do is use your ads to target them into something free, okay? Whether that's a free uh, clean eating group. By the way, please don't run free clean eating groups unless your passion is clean eating. I'm just throwing that out there, okay? If that's not your passion, find something around your passion, okay? You can run it for a coach sneak peek, okay? And there's lots of different ways to run it other than just calling it a coach sneak peek. I ran um, a webinar for my Art of Recruiting group where I allowed them to invite their coaching prospects. And I called it Rediscovering Your Purpose. And I literally just talked about how I have found my purpose helping people. And I walked them through a couple tips on how to rediscover your purpose. And those tips just happen to be the things that you do as coaches. And then I basically gave them an opportunity to join the community, okay? That's how I run my webinars personally. I have a webinar that I'm doing tonight. That's literally exactly what I'm explaining. I've been accumulating people to my like page. And now I'm gonna say, hey, I'm doing a free training for coaches tonight where I'm gonna teach you how to become unstoppable. 
I am going to teach you how to become unstoppable, but I'm also going to sell you into the art of recruiting. I'm just saying, okay? That's the whole point. The whole point of my monthly webinars, I spend thousands of dollars to promote it so that I can make tens of thousands of dollars over the next week in my group. Okay, so see how this is like a funnel? A funnel, for those of you who don't know, a funnel starts wide and then gets narrow, correct? The whole point of the funnel, we're trying to get people who don't know who the heck we are to just know who we are and then to like us and then to trust us and then to join us. Does that make sense? If we can get more people to know us, we get more people to like us, more people to trust us, more people to join us. Okay, now, what you've been doing, which is just starting conversations and building relationships and all this stuff, is the same process. It's just that you're doing all the work instead of letting it work for you. And I'm not saying to get rid of that. Again, don't abandon what you've been doing to chase a new venture that you don't know if works for you just yet. Give it, okay? And that's what I teach all people. When I, when, when I started using Facebook ads, I still did all my normal stuff. And then I would take like an hour at night to set aside to work on my ads. And I allowed that one hour a night to kind of build up momentum over time until eventually it became profitable enough that I stopped messaging people altogether because I just had hundreds of people a day coming to me. If you have hundreds of people a day coming to you, there's no point in messaging 10 or 15 people, right? You're just like, cool, I don't have to do that anymore. Okay? So I want you to think about What's the thing that I can offer for free? Whether that be a free group, you may be like me and you're really, if, if you're really good on camera, please do some type of a webinar. You don't have to call it a webinar like I do because at the end of the day, let's face it, I'm selling to business owners and webinar is kind of our language. It's probably not the language of someone that wants to lose 10 or 15 pounds, right? Um, but please get on camera, okay? Please, 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 please. Um, you can run a free group. Um, however you're doing it, what I want you to think about is how do I give someone free access to me where I can build a relationship with them to where then they'll want to buy. That's really all I do when I speak on team calls, guys. When I, I speak on team calls for free. Why? I'm giving you free access to me, trusting that if you could just spend an hour with me, you'll want to spend four or five hours with me, right? And if you don't, that's okay, but some people do. And that's the best way you're more likely to spend two or $300 on a guy that you've spent an hour with than two or $300 on a guy that you saw an ad from. Am I right? Okay. So we go motivational to obviously just posting on your page regularly. You don't have to do it five times a day. No one's going to see it on your life page. Okay. But go live at least once a week, run that as an ad for 10 or 15 bucks just to make sure your page sees it and then have some type of call to action for something free that targets your like page. Got that? As long as you're bringing enough new people to your like page, it will be a very simple process. Okay, I'm gonna check this chat real quick before I go into share screen, see if there's some random questions. Do, 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 do. Yeah, stop being a chicken, Jennifer, okay? <laughs> Yes, perfect. Thank you, Melissa. Melissa just set it all out for me. Okay, so I'm going to show you one of my, a couple of my motivational posts just so you can see what they look like. Um, and the thing, here's, here's the only part that's a little tricky is figuring out what your targeting is going to be. For me, it's easy because it's mostly beast body coaches, right? So here's the tip that I would give you. Who is already owning what you want to do so for instance i'm just gonna give a couple examples if your brand is specifically health and fitness okay who's someone that's already owning that world that really can't offer what you offer i'm gonna use jillian michaels as an example she's owning the health and fitness industry but let's face it she doesn't offer a facebook group right you're never gonna get to talk to her <laughs> Right? So if I can go after her audience, I have something to offer them that she can't. Okay? Now, that's for health and fitness. Let's say the coaching opportunity. Um, if, if, if your specific thing is I'm wanting to attract people to my page, 
who are going to want to work a business because the business side is a little more of your passion, then you might go after um, some entrepreneur trainers. You might go after someone like Lewis Howes. You might go after someone like Gary Vaynerchuk. Okay. And just try to basically steal their audience. Okay. What you may have never thought about, I'm sure Melissa has realized this, is my whole business is built on borrowing other people's audiences, right? Melissa signs on with me one-on-one -on -one and I now have access to her whole network that she has spent a lot of time building, correct? I speak on one team call for her and I always joke that it's unfair. I can speak on a team call for one hour and in one hour, I can accumulate the amount of influence that it took Melissa 10 years to build getting on call after call after call after call. It's so unfair. And all I'm asking you to do is the same exact thing. It's to tap into other people's networks that they have already built using Facebook ads, okay? So let me go into, will it let me share a screen? Yes, it will. Thank you, Melissa. You already had that taken care of. And you are about to see my messy, I guess it's not too bad right now because I just had my computer worked on and it wiped the whole thing. So it's not too bad right now. And I'm just going to go to my Facebook right now. I'm going to go to my ads manager and you're going to see that I run a few ads, just a few. And I just want to let you peek at a couple of my motivational ones. Um, let's see here. Give me a second because I am the people person and not the, um, well, here we go. We got to get down to these cheap ones. Oh, there we go. See how, see how, it's costing me 17 cents per engagement. Those are the ones where I'm just trying to accumulate likes so that I can get them to my page. It never costs very much to do that. Because let's face it, if you see a fun post, you just like it, correct? So, I'm gonna go to edit. I'm just gonna show you what this looks like. Oops. Can you guys see that? Can you see this, Melissa? You're the only person that I can see. Am I at least sharing the right screen? But sometimes I screw that up. Okay. See, it's a picture of me at my event. Like I said, got a really good camera angle where I'm jumping over the top of everyone else. No one else was jumping at the time, so it looks like I'm really high. And it just says the only limitations that exist are the ones you create in your mind. See how simple that is? So, 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 so simple. And if I go to cancel, it used to have an option where I could literally see the ad. I could click on it, and for some reason, that's no longer here, and I don't know why. It kind of pisses me off. I will go to – I probably should have just done this. It's going to load crazy. It's on Zoom. Yeah. Let's just go back to this way. And let's go to legacy leadership. There's a nice, fun, pretty new picture of me speaking at my event. <laughs> okay, so here's this is this is my webinar that I'm hosting tonight that I'm running ads for, but I'm gonna peek down to this and actually show you the ad. Here's what it looks like to you guys. It's reached 7,600 people. It has 202 likes on it, four shares. Here's the other cool thing is motivation posts. People like to share them, okay? This is one that I just started May 1st, but I, I think I just started the ad like a week ago. Um, so in like a week, I've got 202 likes. Literally, you click on this. If you don't know how to do this, you click on this. And get out of here. You're going to scroll through. And see how it says invite? Oh, I've now invited them to like my page. I've now invited, invited. I have my assistant do this daily. He's a little behind on this ad. I'm going to have to send him a message when we're done. <laughs> hey, bro, catch up, okay? We're losing money. We're losing money right now. And I'm just inviting them to like my page. That's it. See all the liked? Those are people we've already invited that went ahead and liked. So it's invited, 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 liked, invited, invited, invited. Invited, invited. This one's actually not doing very good. Usually, honestly, I will get like three-fourths of the people that I invite to like it. So I need to change this one out because apparently people aren't seeing enough from this of who I am. Um, the other thing you can do is do short videos. I have a short video that I recorded on goals. Let me see if I can find the notifications for it. 
sorry, I'm running so many ads right now that I have notifications just going crazy. Here's a live that I did toward my like page. The world needs your voice. It's reached 9,900 people, 4.2 thousand views. So those are all people that are interacting with me and seeing who I am. They're getting to know me. They're getting to trust me. Okay. Now, once I've got them to like my motivation post, okay, now I'm building the relationship with them by going live, sharing free content. I'm just adding value to them. That's all I'm doing. I'm adding value to them. I'm helping them on their journey. And then I'm going to invite you to my next free training for coaches. Notice how I put free in the very first line so that they know this guy's not trying to sell me something. It's cool. It's free. Whatever. Now I can read it, right? <laughs> and all I'm doing is inviting them to a free training. And on this training, I have like seven different ones going for this. Um, and this is the kind of results that I get. See this right here? 1.3 thousand going, 717 interested. Now, I am spending a lot of money on this. I spend three to four thousand dollars on this, but let's scale that down to three or four hundred dollars. We're gonna divide this by 10, okay? Because I'm not asking you guys to spend three or four thousand dollars, but let's just scale it down to one tenth, and you've still got instead of 1,300 people going, 130 people going. How many of you feel pretty confident that if you get 130 people on a free call or a free webinar or a free group? You could convert five to 10% of them. 10% of 130 is 13 people. That's Success Club 26 with either one call or one free group. Okay, so I'm not asking you to do exactly, I'm not asking you to do it on the scale that I'm doing it, but I'm asking you to take what I'm doing and bring it to whatever scale you can afford to do. I will say this, my motivational posts, I run at five bucks a day five bucks a day in over the last year and two months, I've grown my like page from 1500 to 21,000 at five bucks a day. Now again, again guys, you have to think about long-term results, okay? So your daily conversations and your daily invites from your personal page, that's your current paychecks. Okay, don't stop. You need to make money right now. You got bills right now, correct? You got family vacations right now. You got kids who are outgrowing their shoes right now. If you're like me, you got four kids outgrowing their shoes right now. But you wanna use something like this to create future sales. Your funnel, okay, so your conver, I like to say it this way. Your conversations and invites are the sales of like next month usually takes 30 days for that stuff to kind of pay off. Your Facebook ads and funnels are the sales of six months from now. But if you can get it up and running, six months from now, you'll have a system that's literally bringing people in regularly all the time for the rest of your life. And then at some point you can say, now I don't have to do daily conversations and invites and just have lots of people come to me. In the meantime, you still have to have your conversations and invites and you need to level them up, by the way, okay? Level them the frick up, okay? But also use something like this to bring more people to you. Does that make sense? Okay, so I showed you a little bit. Um, I don't know exactly how much of you understood, how much of you didn't. I don't have a call for 35 minutes, and the only thing I need to do in the next 35 minutes is go pee and get some water. So you guys have got me for 30 minutes. If you want to ask some questions, we can go back into the Power Editor. I can show you more stuff. We can answer targeting questions. Anything you want, Melissa, I'll just hang out, let you run the show, and as long as you want to hang out and they want to hang out, um, I, I don't have to pee for 30 minutes, so I'll be good. <laughs> So sweet. And, and the, you know, my, the team has probably heard me mention this before. Some people have gone to Shalene's events, but she always says that um, she wishes Facebook would let her spend more money. She spends yes. every single penny she can on Facebook ads because she gets the return from it. Yes. And I heard her say that at Platinum Edge. And I kid you not, I kid you not, Melissa, 
I had done nothing with Facebook ads at the point. I heard her say those words a year and a half ago. And there was something that clicked in me when I heard those words. I don't remember anything else she said. I don't even remember what her presentation was about. <laughs> but she mentioned those words. Yep. And, I, and I said, I have to figure that out. Right. If, if she's spending as much money as they will allow her to, and it's the most profitable form of advertising she has, yep. I just, I have to go. And I literally went home from Platinum Edge and I dove into Facebook ads and said, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to dive in until I do figure. And I, and I, and I tell that story all the time um, because that's why I say urgency, urgency breeds creativity. When you have these urgent goals, you're looking for the answer. Right. And I don't even know what else she said. I was just looking for my next step and I heard those words and I swear to you, it was like the voice of God. And I, and I, and I went home and I just ran with it and, and it took me three months to figure it out. But once I did, it changed my whole business. Right. You know, and you're, you're getting a ton of questions, but if I can just tell you guys that even from my experience over the last over eight years that I've, um, I've always done kind of what Josh said, we, we, has worked in the past, which is doing call to action posts, whether it's my personal page or like page. Um, and now creating that free intermittent fasting group. And I blog now, which is free information for people to like, know, and trust me by writing blogs where they see my personality and I'm giving away information for free. This is the first full month that I've done that. Um, and you guys, I have 84 success club points this month because I'm utilizing exactly what Josh said to do. Um, and I've never done that before. And it's broke my record <laughs> ridiculously. Yeah. Yes. But what he's saying is golden. You've just, you've got to get, you've got to put yourself out there and you may have to spend a little bit of money to make a whole lot more money. Um, yeah. But that's just the way the digital age is. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's really, really cool because um, like you said, a, a year ago, two years ago, beach body coaching was, still a new -er thing to social media and people were excited about it and there wasn't much competition. So now there is more competition. There are more people and people are getting a lot of stuff thrown in their face. And let's face it, people are going through my groups and leveling up on their conversations and lots of people are, and that's why free is so valuable because it sets you apart from everyone else. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is we have to constantly evolve. I don't believe competition exists because if you're constantly evolving, you always go to the next level where no one else is. And to me, that's what free offering something for free is. I mean, who else can you go to a free webinar once a month where they give away a thousand dollars cash, five free training groups and t-shirts. Does anybody else do that? Nope. Only me. I know that if I give away that kind of value, People are excited to show up. And if I can just get you to show up, I will sell you every time because that's what I do. So you have to just do the same thing. What is, it that I'm, what is it that I'm passionate about? If I can get you in your passion zone, I can get you in your strength zone. Yeah. And that's the thing you got to think about with this whole free stuff is don't offer something free just for the sake of free. What's your passion zone? And that's why I love that Melissa is tapping more into her intermittent fasting stuff because that's, that's her passion. It really, really is. And if you don't have a passion yet, that's fine. Write on someone else's passion for now, but work on finding, like, what's the thing you get excited about? Maybe it's personal development. I have um, clients that run free groups on personal development. Uh, my girl, Andrea Crowder, is about to launch some free groups more on finances because that's like her thing. If you follow her on Instagram, she's spiritual millionaire, which, which I love. Her thing is spirituality and finances. So why would you not run groups on that? Mm -hmm. and, and, and remember this, and I promise I'll get to questions in a second, but I, I want to throw this one more thing at you because I think it's very, very important for the sake of, of branding and content. Too many people put themselves in a beach body box. Yeah. And you say, I'm a beach body coach, so I have to talk about this. And what I'm challenging people to do is to come out of the beach body box and allow yourself to be under the beach body umbrella. Amen. Do you hear how totally different that terminology was? Get out of the box and just stay under the umbrella. In other words, instead of thinking that you're confined and stuck, 
realize beach body is just simply an umbrella that protects you okay it's given you all of this incredibly um all of these great systems you don't have to hand i have to hire an assistant just to handle all of the freaking transactions it's so annoying having to do all that crap you don't have to do that you don't have to handle shipping you don't have to do all these. they're covering you okay but they're not limiting you right no one in beachbody said you're only allowed to talk about containers and you're only allowed to talk about the 21 day fix think about all of the things that beachbody living encompasses personal development is something that encompasses right anything that has to do with nutrition anything right we have some people that are keto we have some people that are shoot i don't know counting macros we have, we have all these different things and that's okay that's humans we should have our own thing because we should find our own thing because we're individuals right but then we also have relationships i have one girl ranked number 20 in the company right now jaylen barnes she's one of micah folsom's ps coaches she wasn't even ranked in the hundreds last year. She didn't even hit elite. She was elite the year before, missed elite altogether last year. This year she gets in my mastermind group. One of the things she's doing is running free groups on a book called His Needs, Her Needs. It's a marriage book. It's a marriage book. But in the marriage book, it talks about men's top needs and mentions the fact that men's top needs are attraction, physical attraction, and sex. Sorry, we're shallow. We just are. <laughs> but that is a great selling point for the fact that, hey, if you're having marriage problems, part of it's because your physical attraction is just non-existent. Right. And I can help you with that. And she has gone from not even hitting elite last year to now being number 20 in the company. And one of the reasons she's hitting such huge numbers is this free group on marriage. Marriage, that's not a beach body thing. Yes, it is. Because if it involves your life, how many of you had marriage problems? It, it, it affects everything, doesn't it? And it sucks really bad. It's not a box. It's an umbrella. I'd be willing to bet if you have something in your life that you're passionate about, Amy Silverman, travel, fits under the umbrella, doesn't it? I mean, if you look at the top coaches, they all have very different messages. Yeah. They have very different passions and they all fit under the umbrella and they all work. So just throw that out there. Think about what's my thing and then build every, build your whole funnel on that. Okay. That should be what your motivational posts are speaking to. That should be what your free groups are based around. That should be what your challenge groups are based around. And that should be the culture of your team. Okay. And that's why those motivational posts are so magical because you can literally speak to your person. So if your thing is travel, create some type of motivational post that something like, um, well, a great quote that comes to mind is Dave Ramsey's, which says, um, live like no one else now so that later you can live like no one else. And then have a picture of yourself at the beach with your hands up. See how that calls out? Not just to people who are like lazy and travel, but people who work hard and want to travel. Okay. You don't want to go for the lazy people. You want to call out to people who are motivated and do the thing that you do. Okay. I'll shut up now. Cause I know I just had some good coffee and I could just talk <laughs> all day and Melissa gets me excited. I love seeing Melissa. <laughs> so, okay. Questions. Uh, you do have a lot, don't you? I love it. Good, 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 because I get pissed when no one has questions. I'm like, really, guys? Come on. Okay, so I'm a chicken. Stop being chicken. Uh, I'm much more comfortable doing live on my like page. Josh, do you still recommend Spuckler as the Facebook ads guy? Yes, he is my personal mentor. I still recommend Zach Spuckler. Zach, Z-A-C-H. Spuckler, S-P-U-C-K-L-E-R. He's taught me everything I know about Facebook ads. Okay? He also teaches... Um, how to use email marketing if you'd rather do it that way he really any type of funnel that you want to create he teaches okay he's personally mentored by James Wedmore who's kind of a big deal um, he's a 23 year old who makes has a seven-figure business okay <laughs> when a 23 year old has a seven-figure business just like probably should open your ears and listen to what the guy is saying right 
Um, do you think it's better to have the quote as your text accompanying your pick or have the quote on the pick itself? So here's the thing. This is just me. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I don't like words on my image because my face is my greatest asset. And I do not mean that in a cocky way. I really, I promise I don't. It's true. But all of us, okay, attraction marketing is a real thing. Your face, as far as ads go, is your greatest asset. Okay? So pretty yourself up, put some makeup on, please do your hair on the day that you take pictures for your ads. And, and, and show your brand, okay? For me, the, the, the picture that performs the best for me is literally a picture of me sitting at a table with my hands crossed like this. And I think the only reason is because it's probably the only time I ever look a little professional. And because I'm a trainer, business trainer, mentor, I think people like to see a little um, business professional side of me along with the fact that I'm younger and have a certain style, okay? So I don't like, I don't like words on the picture because if I'm scrolling – if I see beautiful enough of a person, male or female, it's, it's, it's not a perverted thing. It's not, okay? If I see beautiful enough of a person, male or female, I'm stopping to see. It, I, I can't help it. My buddy Cody, who's sitting back here behind me, who I met with this morning, he is a beautiful person. He is. He's got really cool hair, and he's got a beard, and he's got tattoos all over. He's a good-looking dude. When you see a good-looking dude, even if you're not a homo, you stop and look. You just, you just do, right? So – brand your face brand you and if you do people will stop and read what you have to say right. not a lot of people scrolling past pictures of melissa i promise you that they're gonna stop to see what she has to say correct same with you and if you're not confident enough to believe that yet get there yeah. work on your confidence because that's a huge part of it it really is guys your confidence shows or lacks showing in your pictures okay but you can test it. You can test it, see what works better for you. Um, looks like you're in the same seat in the live video ad. I probably, I, I, re, I, I don't know if I, oh yeah, yeah, the one that I just showed earlier. Yes, I am, except I was, I was actually two seats over, but yeah, same spot. Um, when you invite to the training, did you target all who like your Facebook page? Yes, okay. So um, let, me, let me show you real quick for those that are like, Facebook ad never done it before in their lives. Let me just show you real quick. Um, when I go to create an ad for something that is a call to action, like my webinar, I go to create ads. Because this is an event that I'm inviting them to, oops, not traffic. I'm going to engagement. Ah, come back. And I'm going to event responses. But if it was just a post that I was trying to get them to like or comment, I'd go to post engagement. Okay, I'm going to go to event responses just for this. And I am going to, I'm not going to show you all of this stuff because we could spend all day on that. This is very important though, to lock in ages, okay? I personally go like 22 to 35, sometimes 40, just because I know that's kind of like the typical age. The typical age, it's not Melissa's hating me right now because she's 41. Um, and I'm going to do women. Because let's face it, there's only five Beachbody male coaches. They already know who I am. <laughs> English. <laughs> English, you don't want to have a bunch of people you can't speak to unless you know other languages, then put those there. This is where you're going to put um, the different people that you're targeting, whoever that is. You can see who I target most of the time. Add a connection type. I'm going to go to Facebook pages, people who like your page. And then I'm going to add my page. So I'm now targeting the people who've already liked my page based on what I've put into these things that is a potential reach of 15,000 people. Now, here's the thing. If you're trying to run a free group, 15,000 people is plenty of people to advertise to, especially when they already know who you are, correct? Now, at $11 a day, I'm going to reach 270 to 1,100 people a day, meaning if I run this for five days, I'll reach at least 1,000 people. I should potentially get at least 100 people in my group. Now, if your ad's doing really good, you could potentially reach up to 1,100 people a day for 11 freaking dollars, okay? So that's how, you, that's how you go about. Now, if this is your motivational post, your motivational post, we're trying to get people to your page, 
we want to go to exclude people who like your page because we don't want to pay money for people who already like your page to see the post. Now notice my reach is 44 million people. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get those people to my page. I'm basically trying to get, I'm trying to get fish from the ocean into my pond so that I can then just fish out of my pond. And it's just so easy because it's this nice little pond that's just full of fish everywhere. I just throw my line out and people just bite. Does that make sense? So the live video just goes to people that like your page. Yes, and, and, and for, the, for the live video, what I would recommend is actually doing people who like your page and their friends. Because the live video is kind of a combination between the motivational posts and the getting people to know you. Live videos are just fun and easier to interact with. So I will actually run them towards people who like me and their friends and try to group, kind of like knock out two birds with one stone. Um, do you do this concurrently or start one ad after the other live? Um, so I'm not completely sure I understand that question, but I, what I think you're asking is do I just run the same one like forever or do I do multiples? Um, I'll do multiples. I'll usually, if I go live today, I'll throw 50 to $100 at it for the next five or six days. And then a week from now, I'll go live again and do the exact same thing. And that way I got fresh content being thrown in front of my followers all the time. So it's like they're getting a connection with Josh regularly with new stuff. Do you recommend connecting your IG ads? No. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. This is one of the most important things that I can tell you about Facebook. Let me share a screen and show you because if I don't, this will kill your ads. When I go down here, see this placements thing? Very important. They were gonna try to send your ad to Instagram if it's a motivational post. Now, because this one's for an event, it's ineligible. But if this were your motivational post or a video or something, it would have Instagram checked and you need to uncheck it right there. Because if you don't, your ad will also run to Instagram and here's the problem is Facebook will basically send your ad to the one that's getting more interaction. How many of you scroll through Instagram and double tap on stuff without ever reading it? If you didn't raise your hand, you're lying. We all do it. We see pretty pictures. Oh, yay, fun. Yay, yay, yay. We don't read it, right? And so the problem is if it gets sent to Instagram, number one, you've never told Instagram your gender. You've never told Instagram your age. You've never told Instagram what country you live in. Okay, those are the main three things in your targeting is making sure that you're only targeting America and Canada. Now you can start targeting UK to build some momentum there. I highly recommend it, okay? You wanna know their age and you wanna know their language. If you miss those three things, your whole ad's screwed, right? Even if you get the rest right. Instagram doesn't know anything about those. Instagram has no idea any of that stuff about us, so your ad is just screwed from the get-go. Yeah. But people are double click happy. So the ad says, hey, this is performing way better on Instagram. Let's put the majority of your money into Instagram. You wake up two days later and you have two likes on your Facebook ad and 700 on your Instagram ad with one comment. You're going, oh, cool. So I can do nothing with this, right? So turn Instagram off. My prayer, I'm praying for Instagram daily. It's, it's on my daily prayer list. <laughs> that they will find a way to figure out who we are so that Instagram ads can perform. When that day comes, oh, it'll be glorious. I will take over Instagram and I can't wait. Because I know you guys, a lot of you actually prefer Instagram. And let's face it, health and fitness people and creative people prefer Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, do, 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 Melissa, are you vlogging on your life page? Hey, how's it going? That was a question for you. No, no, no vlog on my page. Okay. <laughs> uh, fibro, do you think it'd be a good group to have showing people that you can fight for your goals even though you suffer? Showing them what I do puts through my illness without meds. Too many groups have fibro and feel sorry that they don't want to fight. So here's the thing, Jennifer, I don't know anything about fibro at all. If it's something, the more specific your target is, the easier it will be to perform because you can literally target other people who have fibro. You can go type into the interests. You can literally type fibro 
and it will pull up recommendations for different fibro groups and different fibro pages. So the targeting will be very, very easy. My only thing is you're saying fibro without meds, and I don't know if that's a safe thing or not. So that's like, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I honestly have no idea. If it's okay to encourage people to fight fibro without meds, then sure, absolutely. Um, but I feel like there's like a health thing there that I'm not a doctor and I don't know the answer to. Maybe you, maybe you already know the answer. I just, I just don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I will say this. Anytime you have something very, 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 very specific, if you have hypothyroidism, if you have, um, oh, what's the other one that so many of my clients have? Um, it's got initials for it and it's some type of um, PCOS. Dang, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. PCOS, you can literally target people like that. And then you can say in the ad, as a woman who has struggled with PCOS for eight years, I found a way to battle it using a simple meal plan and workout plans comment below if you'd like to be added to my next fighting PCOS group and people will go nuts because let's face it. Everyone that has one of those special things has tried a thousand ways to fix it and none of them have worked because most of them have never changed what they eat and have never exercised, right? They just like tried to find a pill and it just didn't work. So yes, do go for it. I'm sorry if I'm speaking a million miles an hour. I'm trying to get through all the questions and the time that we have. It's recorded if you need to go back and listen. Um, do you have a recommendation for a third-party system to help grow Instagram now that Instagram is gone? I don't at this time. I don't. Um, I do have a bonus module in the art of recruiting that's using pay for shouts. So a lot of my clients, I know Melissa has used these in the past for building their following on Instagram are reaching out to big pages and basically it's, it's, it, you're basically running an advertisement on their page and you can use it to grow your page. I recommend using it for a call to action post to fill your groups, to fill your things. Um, but other than that, I don't have a third party recommendation. You can do it the old school way, which is just liking the crap out of people's stuff and commenting. Um, for now, as far as Instagram goes, I would just recommend pay for shouts. As far as time goes, it's gonna be your best option. Shout for shouts, which is where you find someone with a similar following, say, hey, I'll advertise you on my page if you advertise me on your page. That's what I would recommend for now, okay? Um, you mentioned the curse of task-oriented people is forgetting to connect with people. What do you find is the curse of people-oriented people? Uh, I think I already mentioned our curse. We show up and we talk to everybody for two hours and then we sit down and realize we don't have a checklist. <laughs> <laughs> the curse of people oriented people is that we're so focused on the people. Sometimes we forget about the task and at the end of the day, the tasks pay the bills. Now, obviously the people pay the bills too, but your biggest curse is going to be forcing yourself to sit down and make a checklist and stick to it every single day your other curse is going to be believing in people that are taking advantage of you one of the greatest tips i ever got on the john maxwell team is if you help the people who want your help you can spend the rest of your life helping the people who need your help when i first started on the john maxwell team i thought i was gonna use my leadership training to help my church my church couldn't afford me I was a volunteer. I did a lot of cool stuff at the church. I enjoyed it. But at the end of the day, it wasn't paying any of my bills. It wasn't doing anything to help my career. I was still working a full-time job, which means I'm still limited in the amount of time I can even give to the church. Honestly, wasn't giving money financially very much to the church because I wasn't making much money. So I said, I got to go find people who want my help. In other words, people are willing to pay for it. By doing that, I now sometimes give in the offering as much as I used to make in an entire week. Now, I haven't started giving my time back to the church yet because honestly, I'm just so busy with my business. Maybe that'll happen at some point. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But it was such a valuable lesson because in the church, I grew up thinking we should just help people. We shouldn't expect anything in return because that's selfish and that's greedy. That's bullshit. 
okay? If people expect things from you without giving something in return, they're using you. Now, I offer free groups. I have a YouTube page with I think 130 videos on it. If you just search my name on YouTube, you'll find probably 200 other calls that I've spoke on on other people's pages. I have a free podcast. I have free webinars. I have a like page with daily content. I'm offering plenty of value. If you're not willing to pay to get into my group, you can go get access to all of those things, but we're not gonna hang out and be best buddies and talk and answer questions every single day, okay? So the point is, as a people-oriented person, you have to put demand on your time or you will give it away all day and night and never make any money. You'll never make any sales and you'll never raise up leaders. That's why I changed my name from life coach to push coach. As a life coach, everyone had wanted access to me. They wanted to hang out with me. They wanted to have conversations with me, but nobody wanted to do anything. I changed my title to push coach so that there's a higher level of expectation on my time. You don't show up and talk to me. Let's puke together. You better be ready to puke if you're going to have a conversation with me. And let's face it, it scares away the people who don't want to do anything. So as a people-oriented person, you're going to have to learn to have a little bit of a backbone. And it's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done because we love people so much. It is so hard for us to say no. But you have to remember, in order to say yes to things that really matter, you have to learn to say no to a lot of other things. Okay? Uh, I need some water. In order, <laughs> I have like cotton mouth going. In order to grow the know, like, and trust, how much or what type of content on your personal like, if any, would you share on your like page? I'm, I think you meant personal page. How much? or what type of content of your personal page would you share? So I'll say this, my personal page and my like page, totally different, totally different. On my personal page, I'm trying to build a relationship with you that makes you feel like I'm your best friend and we can just hang out and, and shoot the shit anytime, okay? On my like page, I don't want to hang out with 21,000 of you, okay? And I don't want 21,000 of you messaging me tomorrow and saying, hey, uh, what would you recommend for a personal development book? I ain't got time. So I like to say it like this. My personal page, I'm trying to make you feel like I'm the guy next door. It's a different kind of relationship, okay? My like page, I'm trying to, and I, and I know this sounds so douchey, but I'm trying to paint myself more as a celebrity who you want access to, but you don't feel like you can just talk to every day. Because I just don't have time for that. That's ridiculous, right? Okay? So it's totally different. My personal page, I'm talking about my kids. My personal page, I'm talking about, you know, the workout, the coffee shop, whatever. My like page, it's 100% adding value. That's it. Does that make sense? And I, and I mix in some family stuff here and there just to show you a little bit more about who I am. But I'm more trying to, I think Shalene talks about your Instagram feeling more like a magazine. That's what I'm doing with my like page. I want it to feel more like a magazine. So it's like, hey, this is a guy that's, he's up here, and if I buy his training, I can, I can, I can go get access to that guy. Mm -hmm. It sounds douchey, but it's the only way you can do business. You, can't, you cannot be available for everybody. I hope that makes sense. Those of us who, with two Facebook like pages, you recommend having both. I have one that is public figure and one that is my dance fitness brand. Should I just focus on the one with 8.1 thousand? So this is tricky. I've never had two like pages. Here's what I would recommend. Alyssa Shoemaker does have two like pages because she has two totally different niches. One is the fit nurse and it kills it. I mean, her nurse stuff kills it. The other one is business mentor. Her business mentor does not perform as well, but she's more passionate about it. So here's the thing. If you have one page that performs better and is your passion, go all in on it. There's no reason to have a second one if one is the one you're excited about and creating money. But if you have 
like Alyssa does where it's split, where one is making more money, but the other is more passionate, then sure, do both, okay? Because you never want to cut off your passion, but you also don't want to cut off your money, correct? And at the end, let's face it, a like page is really easy to manage. It's a once a day post, and you set up some ads that do all the work for you, okay? Do you use a lookalike audience? I don't use a lookalike audience because I don't need to because I know exactly what my audience looks like. However, I highly recommend lookalike audiences for people that have a following of like 2,000 or more. If you just don't know where to start off, some of my clients, their lookalike audience kills it and they don't even have to set up their own targeting at all because their lookalike does so well. Megan Eagleston is one of those people. But then I have other clients who try the lookalike audience and unfortunately they've built such a huge brand within the Beachbody community that their lookalike audience sucks. So you've got to just experiment with that and find out. Um, you're welcome, Charlene. You're welcome. Hmm. That's it, Josh. That's it? That all the questions? Yeah, you need to go potty and get water. <laughs> Did, I can hang out with you all day, Melissa. How you about are. I answer? There's one last question. How about I answer that? Okay. Do you use for webinars, Zoom, Facebook, private groups? I use an event page to accumulate the people, okay? For me, for me personally, I like event pages because it's somewhere where I can post daily and I can allow them to invite their own people and I will literally run contests and do giveaways for people who like tag the most people in the page, okay? Then, if you're ready to scale up a little bit like I do, I use Webinar Jam so that I can collect email addresses and now I can do retargeting ads, okay? Mm. That's kind of like a whole nother level, but it's very, very, very effective. If you're not ready to go that complicated, go live in the event page. The beauty of going live in the event page is that people can share it, and, and people will share it like crazy. They'll tag their friends in there, and then you're just accumulating all these people to the video. Make sure you have a good call to action at the end. Make sure you get plenty of information about how to get a hold of you if they actually want to join. But that's, that's the two different options. I really like the event page though because you can run ads on event pages and you can create like kind of a, I like to take two weeks and build a relationship with the people before the event ever happens. So I'll post questions in there. Hey, what's your number one struggle? And that's constantly just giving me more ammunition for the webinar. Well, you guys told me you struggled with this. You told me you're having problems with this. Here's the solution. So I hope that helps. Melissa, I love hanging out with you. Invite me anytime and I'm there. My phone is blowing up. I just, they love, Good. love, love, love you. So I know you have to go, but I, I can't. I, this was amazing. Absolutely amazing. You blew me out of the water, so I can't imagine what you did for them. Well, I'm just honored to be here, so thank you for having me. Thank you, Josh. Have a great day. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.